circular arcs swinging motion. So the timing and spacing in uh, swinging has some uh, similarities to uh, falling motion, but uh, some differences as well. Uh, I think it's uh, useful to think of swinging motion like you'd see for a swinging pendulum to picture that in terms of say a ball rolling in a in a circular uh, half pipe. So uh, near the apexes the um, motion is like going down a steep slope and so in that case it's uh, rather similar to falling. But uh, near the bottom where it goes from swinging down to swinging up. Uh, at that point, the slope is rather flat and something rolling on a flat surface uh, has a fairly constant speed. So, uh, so you notice that the, there's a lot of texture in the timing near the apexes where you're um, falling and slowing out or uh, rising and slowing in, but in the center, the timing and spacing is uh, pretty constant and uniform. Uh, we, we see this in the uh, motion curve and in the uh, motion graph. Uh, if we uh, graph, for example, the angle at different frames, uh, we see that the motion curve has a lot of uh, curvature. It, it bends quite a bit uh, near the apexes and uh, it looks somewhat similar to a parabolic arc. It's not quite the same, but it looks somewhat similar. Uh, but then in the center part uh, where the um, pendulum is swinging uh, through, the, through the center, uh, the curve is almost a straight line there. So uh, it's going the fastest uh, around the bottom but it's also going uh, fairly uh, uniform, constant motion uh, uh, near the bottom. So this is the, the essence of capturing the timing and spacing of, uh, of swinging motion. Here's a little uh, pencil test that sort of shows that uh, nicely, also combines it with the uh, motion in a uh, parabolic arc as the sack is flying through the air. Now, um, visually, this timing and spacing has even more texture when we see it in perspective. So uh, when we have the swinging motion uh, coming towards the camera, then uh, the fact that there's a lot of uh, texture near the apex uh, is uh, particularly noticeable. So. Uh, here's an example. There's a bowling ball pendulum that is swinging straight at the camera. So, in uh, in that example, uh, it's very um, noticeable when the uh, ball is coming straight at at you when uh, when I do that as a demonstration in class it's almost uh, terrifying because the ball looks like it's uh, certain to to hit me uh, right at the last moment. Now let's talk a little bit about the amount of time, the actual timing uh, that occurs during swinging motion. So whenever we have some kind of repeated motion like uh, swinging back and forth or vibrating up and down or oscillating back and forth. So uh, all of these types of uh, repeated motions are called periodic motion and the time it takes to complete a full cycle is called the period of the cycle. So that would be the number of frames that it takes to make one round trip in say swinging motion. Now. The period of a pendulum uh, only depends on the length of the pendulum. So uh, it doesn't um, depend on the mass, for example, it just depends on how long the pendulum is. So the, uh, the greater the 
length of the pendulum, the uh, slower it's going to swing back and forth. Uh, but the, uh, the way this works is that a pendulum that's four times longer takes uh, twice as much time uh, to swing back and forth. In other words, the period of the long pendulum that's four times longer, the period is twice that of the small pendulum that we see here. Uh, let's look at an example of uh, pen two pendula of different length. These are um, one is about twice the length of the other. And when you uh, see them swinging back and forth, hopefully it's obvious that the short one is swinging faster in that it has a shorter period. So the uh, the one that has a short length uh, also has a shorter period, and so it takes less time to complete a cycle uh, than the longer pendulum. Uh, we see this in um, uh, character motion, so uh, long uh, uh, characters with long legs uh, tend to walk with a gait that is a uh, longer time. So uh, since the leg tends to swing at its natural um, period of oscillation, uh, the characters that are uh, short-legged have a quicker uh, gait. It takes less time for them to swing their leg uh, compared to uh, long-legged uh, characters. Uh, this is uh, also uh, part of the reason that in uh, running, uh, the swinging leg, since you want to uh, swing it uh, as quickly as possible, uh, you tend to pick up the leg in order to essentially shorten the length of the pendulum. So uh, picking up the leg uh, brings the center of gravity closer to the pivot point, the hip, and thus it um, has a quicker natural uh, swinging uh, period. Now, another characteristic of uh, the swinging motion is the amplitude. So the amplitude is basically the distance uh, from the apex uh, to the center. So uh, if we have a small amplitude, then the distance that the um, uh, swing uh, goes back and forth is a, is a small distance. If we have a big amplitude, then it uh, swings over a large distance. And one thing which is interesting is that the period of the swinging motion uh, does not change with amplitude. So if I have a pendulum and I have it swinging on a small amplitude uh, versus a large amplitude, uh, in both cases, the amount of time that it takes to make one round trip uh, is the same. Now, the large amplitude will have a faster speed, so it will, um, if you measure it in terms of the distance traveled per frame, it has a higher speed, but then uh, the large amplitude also means it has to cover more distance, and those two balance out, so the amount of time that it takes to do a round trip is the same. Uh, let's look at some uh, video examples of this. So I have a uh, this pendulum, I'm going to start with a small amplitude swing, and I'm going to make a, a sound to mark the, uh, the period. Beep! 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 Now let's see the same pendulum uh, with a large amplitude swing. Beep! 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 Hopefully you uh, could tell from my annoying uh, beeping that 
uh, in the two cases, whether it was a small amplitude or a large amplitude of the swinging motion, uh, the amount of time that it took to make a round trip, the period, uh, was about the same uh, for small amplitude as it was for large amplitude. So in uh, summary, uh, the timing and spacing for swinging motion has a uh, slowing in and out of uh, the apex, uh, somewhat similar to um, falling uh, motion. It's not quite the same as the odd rule uh, as we saw before, but it's it has um, a somewhat similar uh, slowing in and out. The swinging motion uh, near the bottom of the swing through the center of the swing is nearly uniform. So uh, that part of the motion uh, is more or less constant spacing. So uh, it's the fastest part in terms of the spacings are the, are the largest, but um, the spacings stay more or less constant uh, around the center. The uh, texture of this timing and spacing is uh, enhanced if the swinging motion is in uh, perspective, so that can often make it quite uh, interesting. The uh, period of a swinging pendulum varies with the length. Uh, the longer the pendulum, the uh, more time it takes to complete each uh, swing. So we said the characters with long legs, uh, it takes them longer to swing their leg than the characters with the short leg. And then finally, the swinging amplitude, so the uh, distance that uh, we're swinging back and forth, um, you can think of it as the angle that you swing back and forth. Um, when the swinging amplitude is large, then uh, the speed is fast. However, the period, the time it takes to swing back and forth, uh, stays the same. Again, this is for a large amplitude, the speed is large, but the distance that has to be covered is also large, and so those two balance out, and the time uh, for swinging the period uh, remains unchanged. So hopefully that um, clarifies uh, swinging motion. Uh, we'll get into uh, more uh, types of uh, motion uh, coming up in the next few tutorials. See you then.